right, everyone. Hi, and welcome to this session. I'm, am I audible to you all? Can you please respond? And guys, please turn on your videos as well, if possible, because uh, you know I want the session to be really interactive. Otherwise, you know it's gonna feel like I'm you know talking to a wall. So I can give you like two more minutes if you want, just uh, quickly uh, you know set things up and turn on your videos. Hi, Jashwir, good to see you again. Yeah. Thanks. We have Jashwir, Sumita, Karen, Jagannath. So I haven't, you know, heard from you since Tripoli. So <laughs> I'm guessing that, uh, you know, you played that. So yeah, I, I believe I've seen the post. So yeah, you've played that, right, Jashwir? Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. How was it? Was it really difficult or, I mean, the exam? Uh, no, no, um, actually it was, it was good. Oh. Um, uh, because of the practice session, I mean, the uh, revision bootcamp, mm -hmm. it was just fine, yeah, easy. Okay, okay. It, it, okay. Yeah. Hopefully for this paper also, mm -hmm. it's gonna be smooth. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, will, I will definitely get to that part, yeah. Because, uh, you know, as you may all have heard, there are a few you know, um, drastic um, changes. Changes, yeah. Uh, we, I will uh, be professional discussing. marks, I think. Yeah, professional marks. It, we, okay. We've increased it from four professional marks to 20. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of like SBL, but, you know, still, yeah. we don't have as any increase in time. So there's that. Um, actually, I think it is a good thing that... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we just need to revise about um, 62, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, percent to to pass the exam, and then yeah. for the question on mark also, should be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, Karen, uh, there's something wrong with your video. Okay, I can understand that. Sumta, could you please turn on your video, or is there an issue? <clears throat> Karan, your audio is fine, right? Uh, yes, audio is fine. I'm facing some issue with the video. Okay, okay no problem. Uh, as long as the audio is good, that's fine. Right, and then Jagannath has joined in. Okay. So Jagannath, can you turn your video on? And welcome to the session. Just mention that. <clears throat> good evening, sir. Hi. And uh, yeah, I believe Jack and I only met through LinkedIn. So yeah, good to see you live as well. Okay, Sumita, as long as you can hear me, then uh, it's good to go and uh, try to, if possible, if your microphone is fine, then is it? Sumita, can you please confirm your audio once? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay, great. Great, this is fun. Okay, so uh, it's great that uh, you know we have quite a few people for APM because usually, uh, usually I used to get like maybe uh, you know one or two students in some of the sessions because APM is you know as you may know it, it's the it's the nature of APM. It's it's a bit less popular I would say compared to the other optional papers. So uh, it's good that you've chose this paper and it has a lot of advantages to it. So that is exactly the point from which I will be beginning the session with. So I'm just gonna share my uh, screen with the slide deck and then we can get started. <clears throat> all right, so first of all, welcome to the advanced performance management. So APM, what is APM and uh, what kind of a paper is this? Let's discuss that first of all. And I know that some of you are really excited to you know, get into the updates and everything, but yeah, uh, you'll have to be patient for a bit more longer <laughs> for that. So when it comes to APM, it's basically a really, uh, I would say creative paper in a sense, because you know the answers that you structure here or the recommendations that you provide to the examiner is something that, uh, that they really, uh, that they really expect to be some wait one second. <clears throat> so yeah, it's really something that uh, you know they expect it to be uh, quite innovative and really creative. So what is performance management first of all? Well, before you know getting into what is performance management and to the syllabus and uh, the rest of the agenda, I'd like to know as to what your uh, you know backgrounds are as of now. So, uh, Jashwir, uh, could you please uh, you know 
quickly introduce yourself so that you know we can get moving. Okay. Uh, hi, I am Jusri, um, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, um, um, actually I have left. Uh, um, actually, I'm left with uh, um, uh, this paper only to to qualify as an ACCA. So hopefully, awesome. I'm I'm gonna pass in uh, mm -hmm. uh, September only. Hope so. Of course, you you uh, you have my blessing. So <laughs> yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, and Jagannath, can you please quickly introduce yourself as well? Just uh, you know, and uh, of course, guys, uh, Jagannath is basically based out of uh, Mauritius, right? If I remember yeah. correctly, yeah. Yeah. Correct. And uh, Jagannath, can you also tell us about you? Yeah. Uh, hi. Good evening, sir. Uh, actually, I've completed my BCom and uh, CA mm -hmm. inter from India, mm -hmm. and uh, I also you know uh, pursuing CA final. But currently, after joining the job, I'm not writing CA final. So mm -hmm. now I'm appearing only uh, SSCA exam. And in okay. SSCA, I have on skill level just uh, in the last June I appeared uh, performance management exam, and mm -hmm. uh, just I started my professional level papers. Right. Right. Great. And where are you based out of Chikanath? <clears throat> uh, I am from Odisha. Odisha, okay. Yes. I have a, a cousin, husband from Odisha, so yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, that's great. Karen, can you please tell, tell us about yourself as well? Okay. Uh, so I'm based in Delhi and uh, I'm left with three professional exams for ACCA. Mm -hmm. And I've also done my master's in professional accounting from Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm currently working with KPMG uh, as a senior. Great, great, awesome. And uh, uh, who's the last person? Yeah, Sumita. Can you uh, also please introduce yourself real yeah. quick? Yeah. Yeah, I have completed my BCom degree and uh, I also completed my skill level paper. And this is my first professional level paper in ACC. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's your first professional level. Okay. Yeah, why APM as your first, you know, professional paper? Is there any specific reason to it? No, I felt comfortable with the PM paper, so I okay. thought. Okay. What was your, you know, last paper in the skill level or, or the paper that you recently attempted? Yeah, it is tax and FM. Tax and FM. Okay, okay. Good yeah. to know. Good to know. And where are you based out of? Yeah, I'm based uh South India, Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu. Okay, okay. Well, I have a close connection with Tamil Nadu because I'm based out of Kerala. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, when it comes to uh, APM, it's great to know that, uh, you know, you guys are from different, like, uh, like educational backgrounds. So, when it comes to APM, what you need, first of all, is something called creative thinking and logical thinking. The idea here is basically, or, or the nature of this paper is basically that of, uh, uh, or, or the objective of this paper is to build that managerial quality within you so that you can, you know, manage operations within an organization appropriately and make good decisions for them. So when it comes to performance management, as the name suggests, it's managing the performance of an organization, right? So. What are we going to learn here that's, that's uh, you know, uh, whatever that we're going to learn here is the advanced version of what we looked at in PM. But I do understand that you guys have received exemptions in PM as well. But don't worry, because we have already covered all the basic concepts in PM along with your, uh, along with the video lectures that has been provided to you at the moment as well. So uh, you don't have to get uh, much tense about uh, whether you would be able to tackle this paper, you, even though you have some exemption for, uh, uh, you know, PM. So don't, don't, don't worry about any such things because we have covered everything. So just to uh, reassure you regarding that. And uh, tell me one thing, uh, have you guys attempted the SBL paper as well? So Jagannath, can you tell me about that? Oh, no, sir. This is uh, APM. is my first professional paper. First paper. And what was your previous paper skill level? Uh, that is the uh, PM oh, paper. First pa oh, okay. Okay. Yes. PM after APM. That's good. All oh, right. Uh, I remember your situation. Yeah. That's why you uh, contacted uh, me, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, I remember yes, now. Uh, Karen, Karen, what about you? <clears throat> uh, yes, I'm clear with this bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, that's good to know as well. So even if you haven't, you know, cleared the SBL, as long as you're attending my course, it's my duty to make sure that you are, uh, you know, you have a strong understanding of these uh, basic concepts as well. So don't worry uh, regarding that. And, but, you know, just to provide you with the guidance since, uh, you know, this is kind of a generic guidance. It has nothing, nothing to do with APM. Uh, since some of you have told me that uh, you guys are like, uh, you know, attempting your first professional level paper. I would, I would highly advise that you uh, also do your EPSM module as well as, mm -hmm. as soon as possible, because that's, that's kind of really helpful uh, when preparing for the optional, not just APM, but for all optional as a professional level exams. So yeah, I try to, it, it only takes maybe, it might take like seven days if you, uh, like you're, you're allotting a single chapter per day. So yeah, just to give you an, uh, give you a basic idea regarding that. <clears throat> And it's also recommended by ACC as well, not just ACC, but by all tutors. So yeah. Okay. So coming back to uh, advanced performance management, there's a common misconception that people usually have with both this APM as well as the PM paper as well. And that is that most people think that this paper is all about the calculations, but I would say that it's not just about the calculations, but it's also about the theoretical aspects as well. Because as I stated earlier, APM is all about the logical thinking and uh, all about making good decisions or providing recommendations for your organization. Now, in order for you to do that, or in order for you to uh, provide recommendations on certain numbers or reports, you will have to understand what the numbers are and how those uh, numbers came into being, right? So that is exactly what we will be doing in the APM paper. We will be learning as to uh, you know, what various topics are and uh, you know, uh, and, and and you will also learn how to provide recommendation based on the knowledge that you've obtained throughout the syllabus in APM. And uh, there might be a few rumors regarding APM as well. Some people say that, you know, this is a paper that you can just easily pass by, you know, just uh, imagining things in the exam itself without even, without any preparation, but that's just, rumors are just rumors. I can tell you that for this particular aspect, because, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 it does involve a great depth of understanding of concepts especially PM related concepts, which we have covered in the video lectures. And, uh, you know, you will have to, you know, learn things, by, uh, I, I wouldn't say by heart, but yeah, you have to understand everything completely in order to tackle any and every question that the examiner throws at you, especially for the September 2022, because when it comes to the September 2022 session or your upcoming exam setting, be it September or December, whatever you prefer, the idea that you have to understand here is that we have professional marks introduced here, which is basically, you know, we have a proportion of 20, sorry, 80 technical marks and 20 professional marks, right? That's basically, it's kind of similar to what we have for SBL as well. But uh, we have the same timing and uh, the approach that you have to adopt here is a bit different from what you, what would be expected from you in the, in the previous sessions. So that's something that you have to uh, definitely keep in mind. So. Uh, that's all about uh, APM. I'm not going to you know, bore you with some uh, basic theoretical concept here. So I'm just going to move on to the syllabus. So as for the syllabus of APM, uh, if you're wondering as to whether there are any updates, yes, definitely there are some updates. And this is something I can, I can think of two approaches to uh, take these updated portions here. One, uh, the one first thing that you have to keep in mind is that the current version of classes that you have is, uh, is still relevant because, uh, you know, there, uh, like I would say like 90% of the current syllabus is already covered in those sessions. So it is, it is highly recommended that you watch, still watch those sessions as well. It's, it's still relevant. It's just a, a minor set of changes, which we will uh, discuss as of now. So. So let's talk about the new and change syllabus, shall we? So we have syllabus part A, first of all, which is strategic planning and control. And there's not much change here, just uh, addition of a small topic, that's basically it. Uh, and secondly, we have, oh yeah. And what is strategic planning and control? Well, it's all about uh, what an organization does, isn't it? So they basically have an objective. Each and every organization has an objective. For example, Fintram Global has an objective of making you pass APM using Vishnu, uh, Vishnu Vijay Sar, isn't it? So that's basically the kind of objective that we have. And in order to achieve that objective, we have to formulate some strategies. And that is what strategic planning and control is all about. We plan some strategies and then we try to uh, implement that strategies or adhere to that particular strategies as well. That's basically the idea here. 
Secondly, and, and let me tell you guys in syllabus part A, we have some, you know, topics which are uh, kind of uh, not, I would say uh, kind of similar, but yeah, it, uh, we have some topics which are taken from the SBL syllabus as well. And uh, by that, I mean the model such as Pestel model, or uh, there is the, why is Pestel always the only model that comes to my mind? Okay, so there is the Pestel model as well as the, uh, you know, uh, there was Porter's FIFOs, yes, 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 Porter's FIFOs model, as well as the BCG matrix, etc. It's always the pastel model, uh, it always comes first. So, yeah, so all these models are covered within syllabus part A itself, and we have covered those in depth. And more than about that, there are also certain other performance measurement related, sorry, performance management related topics as well. So, it's a, it's a mix of both. It's not just the SPL topics, but it's a mix of both uh, topics. There are advanced PM topics as well as SBL topics as well. But there's a there's a uh, really important point that you have to keep in mind here, and that is basically regarding the difference between SBL and APM. So if you're wondering uh, whether you can you know use the same approach as to what you did for SBL in APM or in the upcoming APM exam, I wouldn't really recommend that uh, because uh, the only reason being that we have two different sets of mindsets here. I'll explain uh, what it is real quick. <clears throat> so when it comes to the SBL paper, what did you do there? You are given a scenario and you had to apply certain strategy, uh, sorry, certain models or certain matrices in order to provide your answer, right? So let's say that you're applying the PEST model. Again, PEST model comes first. So yeah, if you're applying the PEST model in your uh, exam in a particular scenario, then what are you going to say? You're going to say that, uh, you know, as per if you're considering the political factors, this, this, that, and this has affected the organization, or uh, this is the ex external factors, this is the internal factors, etc. So for pointing out things and explaining things, you would get marks in SBL, right? However, when it comes to APM, there's a different mindset that you have to use here. The mindset is that how can you use these models or these concepts to improve the performance of an organization? Because our primary focus in APM is the performance of an organization and how we can improve them or what are the uh, inefficiencies in the organization and how can it affect the performance? Uh, does it increase or decrease performance, et cetera? And folks, that's basically what APM is all about. It's all about, uh, it's, it's primarily focused on the performance of the organization and therefore adapting the answering model as to what you use for the SBL paper is ineffective in APM. And we do have uh, a different set of uh, approaches and uh, exam tips and tricks. And these are all covered in the questions that has already been included within the video question marathon. And of course, you will also be uh, updated regarding the latest changes in the question structures as well, okay, folks? So don't worry about that. <clears throat> now, moving on to syllabus part B, we have performance management, information systems, and development in technology. Now, this is a really impo important area as well as a really interesting areas as well. Why do I say that? Well, that's basically because <clears throat> it not only has the, uh, a few calculation aspects, I would say, but primarily it's more oriented towards the theoretical area. And this particular theoretical area, I know that, okay, why is theoretical area interesting, you may ask? Well, that's basically because we have the latest industrial updates in this particular syllabus area. We have big data, we have data analytics, which you may have already covered in various other uh, papers, I know that. However, when it comes to APM, we are also deep diving into it. Okay, folks, we, we're not just learning, and I believe, I, I'm pretty sure that in uh, various other papers, you've learned as to what big data is and what data analytics is, right? However, now in the updated syllabus, you will also be learning about types of data analytics as well. For example, there is something called uh, predictive analysis, or there are some other uh, sorts of, it's kind of an, an, another segment of analysis, I would say, such as voice analytics, et cetera. It sounds interesting, isn't it? So that's basically the kind of things that, you know, that you will be learning in this particular uh, syllabus area. Now, so moving on, again, information uh, management information system is not that new because we've already, I'm pretty sure that you may have covered, uh, you know, a lot of things regarding these in, uh, in your previous courses as well, be it CA, be it uh, any graduation courses as well such as, you know, management information system, MIS. You've heard of that, right? You may have learned about that in your graduation, perhaps. Or I believe it's even covered in the 12th grade, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. 
I basically had some, uh, you know, computer related topics there. Perhaps that's why. Yeah, no, uh, no, any which way. So moving on, it's not just the development in technology, but you will have also have to, uh, you know, uh, it's not just the, uh, you know, data analytics or big data alone, but there are various other technologies as well. For example, uh, let's say RFID technology. That's something that you can use as an example in certain uh, scenarios. And so the modern scenario, or, or I wouldn't say modern, but yeah, in the current uh, exam related scenarios or exam questions, you, you will be able to find some modern updates there or uh, the organization will be in a, in a technological environment, obviously, right? Because nowadays all businesses are, are, are adopting to these kinds of technologies. So uh, the, in, the scenario that will, you, that will be provided to you will have these kinds of systems in it. So an organization may have RFID tags in their assets or inventories, et cetera. Well, maybe not inventories, but assets. Uh, or they may have some sort of systems within, uh, within them uh, uh, or softwares within them that, that, that could be the strength of that organization. So you will have to learn about all these things and you will have to understand how all these things works as well. And I'm pretty sure that some of you can use your work experience in this areas as well. So according to your experience, uh, uh, if, if, if you are familiar with such technology, then what can you contribute to that scenario? That's something that the examiner values from you guys as well. But even if you don't have work experience, that's also fine because you have time to learn about these things and adapt these while answering in, to these questions in the exam. <clears throat> so yeah, nothing to worry about here. And uh, yeah, just a quick poll on that. Uh, how, many, how, how many of you are really worried about the changes? Or how many of you feel that, you know, uh, the changes are going to be difficult? Jashmir, what's your opinion on that? Uh, yeah, you already told viewers, right? Yeah, you feel that it's uh, kind of easier. Okay. Yeah, easier. Mm -hmm. Jagannath? <clears throat> what about you? Yes, sir. Uh, really, I'm worried about the changes from professional mm -hmm. Mark also no, introduced in this, from the okay. September exam. Okay. Okay. You're worried. Okay. Karan? Um, yes, I think this, like, I'm worried about, like, what the changes are and how we're okay. going to tackle it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I'm sorry, uh, Sumita, I always, uh, since you're not on the screen, I kind of forget the name, so sorry about that. So, yeah, Sumita, what's your I opinion? I think it would be easy. Easier. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, Karen, I believe since you're working in uh, KPMG, uh, are you like uh, in the audit field or? Oh, uh, yes, I'm in the audit field. Okay, okay. Wow, I guess, guessed that right. Okay, I should learn astrology. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, so since you are in the audit field, I'm pretty sure that you might be familiar with, you know, the modern organizations and the new sets of controls or uh, like technological updates that they probably have, right? So you can perhaps utilize those knowledge. It's not, I, I can't 100% guarantee that because I'm not a real astrologer, first of all. And secondly, uh, you know, uh, I'm not exactly sure how the questions is going to be in the exam or what scenario will, will the examiner, uh, you know, uh, uh, show us. So you will have to, you know, you, you could not will, but yeah, you could use your, uh, you know, work experience from understanding like documenting various walkthroughs or by reading through various uh, placemats, et cetera, by, by, by understanding the process flow of various controls, et cetera. So you can perhaps use that experience in your answers as well. As I stated before, it's a completely creative paper. You need to use your professional judgment here and you need to use a, a, you know, creative thinking here as well. So moving on <clears throat> to part C, that is strategic performance measurement. Performance management and performance measurement are two really different things. Because in performance management, we look at the broader concept, right? We manage the performance of an organization. However, performance measurement is more about measuring the performance. So how do we measure it? Or what are the techniques that we can use to measure it? So then this is a entire, I would say majorly, we were focusing on uh, calculation aspects such as calculating the ROI or RI, et cetera residual income or uh, you know, return on investment, as well as there are various other concepts relating to transfer prices. That's not necessarily performance measurement, but yeah, we still cover that topic here. And of course, uh, we use a lot of uh, 
models here as well, such as the balanced scorecard. I'm pretty sure you're you're all familiar with that balanced scorecard approach, as well as uh, you know uh, what what was it? Yeah, Fitzgerald and Moon's building block model, as well as there's a new concept known as the performance pyramid as well. If you uh, haven't you know learned that from uh, any other courses, I'm pretty sure that it's covered in uh, the CA final topics or so. Yeah, not sure, but yeah, okay. <clears throat> So these kinds of uh, topics are covered here and there are certain other uh, sets of topics as well. So keep an eye out for that. And finally, we have part D that is performance evaluations. So guys, a really important update that I'd like to provide you is that in the earlier sessions, uh, uh, the, this particular part D used to be performance evaluation and corporate failure. But as per the new update, corporate failure is no longer applicable to any of the exam sessions. So you don't necessarily have to learn uh, you know, much about that. But uh, you know, there, are, there are two sides of a coin, right? So you can either view it as a positive way or a negative way. But I would say <clears throat> as of now, corporate uh, failure has been included in the videos, uh, video lectures that has been provided to you. So you can watch them just to understand what these are, maybe if you are interested in it. And it was kind of a really interesting and easy topic. I can tell you that much. So if you want, you can take a look at that. But yeah, that, it's not necessarily relevant to your exam, just to uh, you know point that out. <clears throat> Moving on to part E. Now, part E is basically the new update that is the professional skills. And we will be discussing about these uh, in a brief manner shortly so that you, know, you can calm your nervousness. <clears throat> and finally, we have part F that is employability and technology skills. Well, this is something that has been added in the previous, uh, you know, syllabus sessions. I mean, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? ACCA year or something like that, because they usually update it on September to June, right? So yeah, in the previous, uh, you know, year, uh, ACC has introduced this particular uh, part into the syllabus areas of all the ACC subjects. So what is this? Well, this is basically a skill that you need to have. That's all it is. So what is this skill and how can you develop it? Well, it's already embedded within your uh, video question marathon. So you can just uh, you know, practice those, so that's totally fine. And as for the uh, skill part, well, you can only really develop the skill by practicing the questions itself. Okay, folks, it's just making use of the spreadsheet and making use of the word processor. That's basically it. You don't have to learn what uh, MS Excel is or what uh, you know, uh, Microsoft Word is because you use that in your daily life. There's no need to, and no, no questions can be tested as, uh, you know, what is MX Excel or what are the functionalities, etc. It's all about, uh, you know, how you use it efficiently to provide an answer. That's basically all it is. <clears throat> so that's basically all about the syllabus. Now moving on to the uh, exam structure. I hope that's the case. No, okay, syllabus update. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, let's discuss the syllabus updates uh, here quickly. So what all things has been added? I've already talked about the thing has, that, that has been removed, which is corporate failure, which I personally uh, you know, like that particular topic as well. So yeah, let's take a look. <clears throat> and I can tell you that that was kind of like an easy mark in the APM syllabus. So yeah, we don't have that anymore. So uh, we have risk and uncertainty on strategic planning uh, and control. So I'll tell you what, what's happening here. <clears throat> So what they've done is, we used to have a separate syllabus area for risk and uncertainty. And risk and uncertainty is basically something that you might be familiar of. I, I'm pretty sure that you're familiar of the risk seeking approach or risk averse approach, the kinds of prefer preferences, right? This is risk neutral, et cetera. So these kinds of things, as well as uh, maximin, maximax, and minimax regret rule. So these kinds of things were included within the syllabus uh, separately in the previous sessions. But now what they've done is they've shifted it uh, from a separate syllabus set area and included it within the syllabus part A. That's basically all that they've done here. So we've already, uh, or uh, like I would say, uh, you know, uh, to put it very simply, I have already included that within your video lecture. So you can, uh, it's still relevant there. I've shown it as a separate syllabus area, but you know, the content is still the same. <clears throat> and I'll let you know if there are any other updates. Uh, in, in future sessions as well. Now, secondly, we have the use of benchmarking in public sector performances. So in the previous attempts, uh, this particular thing was like, uh, you know, the silent character in the syllabus, I would say, because uh, people would just, you know, flip through these pages uh, in the previous sessions. But now, now it's kind of, you know, more important, it, it more, it's more important. And I believe I have included, uh, you know, 
I have covered the league tables in detail in my sessions as well, if I remember correctly. So yeah. But the problem is with the benchmarking aspects. Well, benchmarking is all, was already there in the syllabus, and we have learned about it. We will learn about its uh, advantages, disadvantages, etc. It's just that we need to focus a bit more on the league tables aspect. League tables are basically using benchmarking for public sector organizations. That's basically all it is. <clears throat> so what else do we have? Yeah, this is a really new and quite an interesting area as well. The issue of data silos and the problem they present for future accounting functions. Sounds kind of scary, isn't it? However, it's it's just, uh, even if you Google it, you'll get scared. So I, I would rather suggest not to do that because we will be uh, you know discussing, especially this particular uh, topic is something that I really like to discuss on a live session as well. So I would say from here on out, just uh, you know be really attentive uh, in the live sessions as well. And let me, let me tell you guys, uh, live sessions are, basically where we cover these kinds of updates, especially for professional level papers. So uh, I, I would require you all to mandatorily attend each and every live session. And the problem is that, uh, you know, we don't record, we don't provide recordings to students, uh, you know, uh, for these live sessions. So I would highly, highly, uh, you know, encourage you all to participate it live. And it's kind of fun, you know, doing things on a live session, right? Rather than just watching me, you know, dance all, all around in the video lectures. So yeah. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> so moving on to the next aspect that is different methods of data analytics. As I mentioned earlier, we're gonna deep dive into the concept of data analytics now, because in the prior years, we were like, you know, a bit, uh, you know, it, it was like, uh, we, we were not familiar with the concepts yet, or we don't know how to use the, uh, use the tools in data analytics efficiently and effectively to work through various processes, et cetera. But now that's not the case because we've done more research and we are using data analytics in various other areas uh, in, our, uh, in our working environment as well. So that's basically why they've included these kinds of topics. Moving on to another aspect that is alternative methods of data analytics like text analysis, uh, image or video or voice analytics. I'll give you an example for this one. It's nothing scary here. It's just that uh, you guys perhaps have, uh, you know, searched something on Google, right? Obviously we've, we've already done that. We're not, you know, uh, born in the, uh, you know, uh, what do you say in the 1800s or anything. So we have obviously searched something. So nowadays we can also search things based on the images or videos or screenshots as well, right? Or through voice as well. I believe that uh, once. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, alternative methods of data analytics is basically nothing but, uh, you know, kind of like the way in which we search the images or voice, uh, we search, uh, you know, we do a Google search using some voice, right? Maybe not all of, all of us are have done that, but it's still uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, that's really crucial, especially for, uh, you know, searching various things. For me personally, I, I, I kind of, you know, search some images for high, res for high resolution images. So yeah, there's things like that. Now, moving on, <clears throat> we will of course be discussing more in detail in that as well. And another thing is uh, there's something known as ethical issues relating to information collection and processing. We are going to learn something called the black box algorithms and large scale data collection and mining. Sounds interesting yet again, isn't it? So that's basically the uh, set of updates that we have for APM syllabus wise. And we may not have covered, uh, you know, some of these within the current video lectures that has been provided to you. But as I have stated earlier, we will be discussing these in the live session. And we will also be discussing, uh, it, we will also be providing you with some recordings as well for some of these, uh, for most of these videos. So uh, at the end of the day, or at the uh, you know time when you will have to attend your exam, we would have covered 100% of the syllabus. So you don't have to worry about that. So am I clear here or do you have any questions? Karen, how do you feel now? Are you still scared or? Um, no, I think as long as we're covering these sessions, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sumita? Yeah, I feel it is easy. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to confirm. <clears throat> I mean, 
and uh, you know another reason why I make it interactive is because you know uh, initially we you know didn't used to make our students come on video, but the problem was that I once took a session for thirty minutes and uh, the internet was down, so I didn't even realize the fact. So that's that's why I, I keep on uh, you know uh, uh, I mean you know uh, asking you to come on video as well. So yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, moving on. So let's take a look at the exam structure and how it has changed, shall we? So there's no change in the timing. There's no increase, which ideally you would expect that, but sadly there isn't. So uh, it's still a three hour and 15 minutes exam. And you have two sections here, section A and section B. The only difference is that in section A, you will have one 50 mark case study question, but the mark allocation is a bit different. That's basically it. So the amount of technical marks that you have here is 40 marks, and the rest of the 10 marks are professional marks. Okay, folks? And in earlier sessions, I believe you uh, remember these four other papers as well. For the four professional marks, what we used to do was we provide the format of a report or a briefing note, et cetera, right? We just provide the uh, format and then introduction and then structure our answers, conclusion, right? So that's how we scored, uh, I believe, four marks in the exam. But the thing is, in the current exam structure, this particular thing, out of the, four, out of the 10 marks, around three to four marks, I would say, yeah, almost three to four marks are available uh, for the formatting and related aspects, okay, folks? And the rest of the marks, that's basically it, not, not five or uh, six like you would expect. The rest of the marks are for your explanations. So it's all about how good you can explain things in the exam now. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Now, moving on to uh, section B, we have yet again two 25 mark questions. There is no change in that, but for each 25 mark questions, 20 marks will be technical marks and the other five marks will be professional marks as well. Okay, folks? So that's basically uh, the change in the exam structure, I would say, <clears throat> or uh, the allocation of professional marks for APM. But don't worry, guys, it's kind of easy once you get the hang of it. I mean, it's kind of easier to score the professional marks once you get the hang of it. So, uh, and if you have any sort of questions or any sort of, and, and, and yeah, this is something that I was planning as well, because, you know, since writing your exam is also really important uh, for the upcoming session, I was also thinking that perhaps we can, uh, you know, I can provide you with some, you know, I would say some simple questions. I, I, I wouldn't call it simple, but yeah, I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with some questions in the month of perhaps August or so, so that you can, you know, write your own answer to those questions and give it back to me so that I can give you a feedback. I, I usually ideally wait for the mock exams, but you know, since this is a critical change, I can't just, uh, you know, we can't just risk anything, right? So let's just, you know, start doing this practice early. So I would all, always advise to try to complete the syllabus of APM as soon as possible so that we can get to the question practice. And once we get to the question practice, let's just, uh, you know, adopt this approach. So uh, in a live session, I'll just come on live and give you guys a question at the end, at the end, at the end of that particular session, and you can just, you know, reward the answers back to me just to make sure that, just so that I can make sure that, uh, you know, you're in line with the professional skills that the examiner is expecting. How does, how does that sound? Just wait, how does that sound? Uh, yeah, it, it, uh, actually, uh, yeah, uh, it, it sounds uh, uh, good. Yeah, right, right. Awesome. Okay, Karen, what yeah. about you? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so the only thing that I would request you is that, you know, please provide me with the answers. That's basically, you have to make the uh, time to do your homework in a way, right? So, yeah. Okay, moving on. And I'm pretty sure most people don't have time for homework now. So, just make sure that you have that. Okay, so now moving on to the professional skills. And I'm pretty sure that you've been waiting for this as well. So I'm just going to briefly give you an overview as to what each professional skills are. And then uh, we can, of course, discuss these things in detail in the upcoming sessions. And I'm also planning on some you know, videos regarding uh, the professional skills for APM and AAA. AAA is also my subject. So yeah, for AAA as well. So yeah. So the first skill relevant to APM is communication skill. And how do you get the marks here? By explaining things very clearly to the 
third party or the uh, to the person that we are providing our recommendations or our reports on so that's that's basically the idea behind communication skill it's about the clarity of your answer primarily and of course you will have to inform and advise that particular party about what you're intending to do okay folks so that's basically it. just the primary focus is on the clarity of explanations here it's all about it's all in your uh I would say a uh, method of explaining things or the way you structure your answer. That's basically the key aspect here. And uh, so folks, there's another important thing that I'd like to communicate as well. When it comes to the, these exams, uh, spelling and grammar is not something that we primarily focus on, but the primary focus is on whether the examiner can understand what you're conveying. Okay, folks, as long as you can do that, you're fine. Okay, folks, they're not gonna, you know, uh, of course, there can be, and I can say that uh, there are a lot of typos and a lot of answers provided by students these days, but uh, it's all in, you know, providing the, or, or making it clear as to what they're intending, uh, or, or have they conveyed what they're intending to convey. That's basically the prim primary point here. And that's basically all as to what uh, communication skill is all about. You don't have to write anything extra for the professional marks. And that's a blessing. I can tell you that. So the technical marks, you just have to write for the technical marks. However, you just have to phrase it or structure it in such a way that you're uh, scoring the professional marks. That's basically the idea here. You don't have to write anything extra other than, of course, the introduction, conclusions, et cetera. Okay, folks? So yeah, moving on <clears throat> to the next aspect. And this is kind of obvious analysis and evaluation skill. Of course, you will be uh, you know, asked to evaluate uh, performance dashboards. Uh, don't uh, don't get too uh, you know scared regarding that performance dashboard is basically some uh, somewhat like a financial statement just uh, you know an indicator with some KPIs that's basically it. <clears throat> so it has maybe the increase in revenue things like that and then uh, some non financial uh, performance indicators as well. So you will have to conduct an analysis on these numbers and provide an evaluation on that. By evaluation, what does it mean exactly? Is it positive or negative? What do you guys think? Uh, Sumita, what do you think? Is evaluation, what is evaluation? What do they mean by evaluation? <clears throat> uh, giving a conclusion. I wouldn't say conclusion. No, that's not what they're looking for here. Um, I mean, um, <clears throat> giving a... Uh... So let's say that you're evaluating a particular, uh, let's say, presentation of a financial statement okay folks presentation of either a financial statement or any other report so what are you doing there exactly are you pointing out the positives or are you pointing out the negatives both both okay right exactly right so we are pointing out not only the the strength of those things but also the uh, negative points okay folks so when it comes to apm scenarios most students what they do is they just they only point out the weaknesses within the uh, reports or dashboard that has been provided to them. But that's not the only thing that the examiner wants you to do. He also wants you to point out the positive things as well. Because even in a working environment, if you think about it, you can't just continuously criticize someone, right? If you do that, then obviously he's going to quit his job and join some other firm, right? So that's basically the thing. If, even if you are, uh, if you are, you know, put, put forth in that particular situation, you not only really have to complain about the negatives, but you also have to point out the positive. That is what evaluation is all about. Okay, folks, analysis and evaluation skill is just that. Okay, folks, you just have to clearly explain the positives as well as the negative. And, and, and yet again, it's all of, also about how you present or uh, present your answer or write your answer here. Moving on to skepticism, and this is something that everyone is familiar of because, yeah, we use skepticism in audit. Isn't it? It's all about having an inquiring mind, having a questionable uh, questioning mindset, etc. And this is something that the examiner wants you in APM as well. Now, how does it? How how is it relevant for APM? Is something that you might be thinking. So, folks, the idea here is that we're not relying on all the information that has been provided in the scenario. Okay, folks, we may we may be provided with a, a number of things provided by the manager, provided by employees, et cetera, et cetera, right? Depends upon different situations, but yeah, we might be provided by uh, an abundant set of resource, uh, abundant set of information uh, within the scenario that has been provided to us. But the objective here is not to rely on everything blindly. 
okay folks whenever the situation intends to we must challenge the uh, particular information that has been provided to us that's basically what skepticism is all about when do you have to challenge these or how do you know when to do that? Well, that's basically easy because uh, in every question, the professional skill that needs to be tested will be mentioned to you under that. So you just have to, if, if it's mentioned skepticism, then definitely understand this. Not 100% of the information is accurate or you may have to challenge some of the information. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea behind skepticism. Uh, is that clear or do you want me to explain something? Any questions? No, clear. Clear. Okay. Okay. Moving on to commercial acumen. So commercial acumen is yet again something that uh, you know, especially students in India are quite confused about. So uh, it, it may seem to be kind of like a complex kind of uh, I would say uh, terminology. I would say, but it's just a simple thing. Whatever you are explaining or whatever your whatever recommendation that you're providing. It should commercially improve the organization, which basically means that it should be uh, uh, appropriate for the organization and it should be profitable for the organization. It basically it should be for the organization's own good. That's basically the idea here. Okay, folks, that's basically what commercial acumen is all about. So uh, of course, I can only uh, you know explain as to what these things are as of now. I can I, I'll have to demonstrate uh, how these skills are presented using a question itself. So I can't actually do that as of now because this is just an orientation session. We will, of course, do that uh, in the upcoming uh, live sessions as well as uh, you know uh, through various videos that will be provided to you as well. Okay, folks, so I can uh, guarantee you that. <clears throat> so that's basically as to what the professional skills are all about. So now moving on to time allocation. Now, this is basically a really interesting area by a lot of students because uh, some students don't have a time strategy. Some students used to follow the time strategy that I used to provide them for the previous sessions, but there's a slight change in that. That's basically the only difference here. So since we have 80% of technical marks, what we can do is, so what, what, I, what I always do is I always provide my students with uh, you know, a particular structure to tackle each question. And uh, yeah, just, I, I believe just will really be familiar with this as well. I, I always allocate some time for reading and planning as well as writing. <clears throat> so when it comes to reading and planning, what, what do we do here? Let's talk about that. In reading and planning, what we do is we read the requirement, we read the scenario, we highlight the information, relevant information in the scenario, which is relevant to the requirement. And then we think of a structure for our answer. Now, this particular thing, thinking of a structure in your of your answer, this is really important when it comes to the APM exam for the, your upcoming APM exam. Why do I say that? Well, that's basically because you need to score the professional marks, isn't it? So if you can't you know, convey things properly, then you'll lose out on the professional marks. So I would say I would devote some extra time for reading and planning. To be more specific, for the 50 mark question in section A, I would allocate 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. I can say that because you know each individual is different on their own. Some, some may take less time to read and plan. Some may take more. So yeah. So yeah, so 20 to 25 minutes to read and plan your answer. Sorry, question. And then uh, one hour and five minutes or one hour and 10 minutes, if that's what suits you to write. Or in other words, type in your answer. Okay, folks, that's basically the time allocation that you can adopt for APM. And then there is section B. For each of the section B questions, you take uh, around 15 minutes to read and plan, or even less if that's possible, and 30 minutes to write your answers. Okay, folks. So if you're not comfortable with this particular time strategy, yet again, you can you know, change it depending upon uh, uh, your suitability. Okay, folks, it's just that you shouldn't take too, uh, any more than uh, like 45 minutes for the 25 mark, as well as... Uh, an hour and 30 minutes for the section A. Okay, folks, as long as you are uh, confident, in, uh, I, I mean, as long as you are, uh, you know, uh, strictly following that particular, I would say, uh, limit, then you will be able to attend every question. Okay, folks. But there's a key thing that you have to understand here as well. The exam is three hours and 15 minutes. And using this particular time allocation strategy, I'm only considering three hours here. Okay, folks. The rest of the time is, the, or the rest of the 15 minutes is basically your buffer time. And what do you do in your buffer time? Well, it's basically the leftover time that you can use to uh, 
just think about this. Okay, folks, let's say that uh, you are not able to complete a portion of, let's say, let's say the worst comes to worst and you're not able to complete, uh, let's say, the last required, last, uh, I would say, a few points for each of the required, each of the questions in section A and B. So you followed the time strategy for one and a half hours due to lack of practice or due to whatever reason, uh, you were only able to write around 80% of the answer for, uh, uh, let's say the 50 mark question and 80% for 25, the 25 mark questions as well. If that is the case, after three hours, what you can do is you can use the 15 minutes to think about this. Okay, folks, how can I utilize the 15 minutes to score the maximum marks? That's basically a question that you need to ask yourself in those 15 minutes. And then, uh, try to tackle those questions. That's how you can, uh, you know, get, uh, I would say, the maximum score possible in your exam. <clears throat> if, that's just a worst case scenario. But if you practice well using this time strategy, then, uh, you know, you can completely avoid that scenario. And maybe even you can, you know, perhaps use the 15 minutes to just uh, read through the answers that you've already written as well. Okay, folks, it all depends upon your practice and your abilities as well. So keep on practicing more questions. It's really important. So. That's basically all about the time allocation aspect as well. So now moving on to the step-by-step -step process of how to prepare for your upcoming exams. Well, this is a step-by-step -step process that I usually tell a lot of students and I'm pretty sure that Jasmine has already, uh, you know, uh, had enough of hearing this as well. So yeah, I'll just uh, quickly run through this. Step one is basically to learn the syllabus and by the syllabus, I mean 100% of the syllabus. Okay, folks. Secondly, you have to practice, practice, and practice. Okay, folks, practice as many questions as you can. Because in APM, they're not going to test the direct, uh, they're not going to ask you any direct theory questions, or they're not going to test the knowledge that you have, or the technical knowledge that you have. Rather, they want you to apply that knowledge in various scenarios. Okay, folks? So that's basically why practice is important. And especially when it comes to APM, you have to practice a variety of questions as you can. Okay, folks, that's something that I would highly recommend because, uh, you know, unlike the AAA paper or various other papers, we don't have a fixed structure of questions that we can, uh, you know, tackle here. So uh, I would say just practice as many variety of questions as you can and become, uh, you know, adaptable to any sort of question that the exam examiner throws at you. Okay, folks, for that, you need as many practice as you can. So practice the, uh, don't just, you know, constrain yourself with the question marathon, but you can go over and above that by, uh, practicing questions from various exam kits. I would highly recommend using the latest exam kits uh, for September 2022 as well. <clears throat> so remember, guys, uh, don't don't audit the questions. I would say that that's a terminology that I specifically use for the audit paper, but I like to use it here as well. Do not audit the uh, you know answers. But what 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 I mean by that is you're not you don't have to like like, like check as to whether the revision git has the right answer or not. Don't just read through everything just like that. You have to, uh, you know, type down your answer, uh, type down your own answer, and then compare your answer with what they provided in the revision kits or uh, what, what I have provided in the video lectures. Okay, folks, so that's basically uh, how you should practice. So keep this in mind. Don't just read through everything. That's, uh, even though that may seem efficient, but when it comes to the exam, you will have a problem with the time. That's basically the uh, primary risk factor of that. Now, Moving on to the next aspect, that is step three, which is basically to do the past paper question. Okay, folks, and I would do the past paper close to the exam or uh, one or two weeks before the exam, just to just to get the feeler of what the exam questions would be like. And after that, there is a, an incredible resource known as the examiner's reports, which you can uh, you know use to understand what the examiner's expectations are for the APM subject. I'm not talking about the professional marks here or anything like that because. The exam is yet to happen, right? So we don't have any examiner's report for the professional marks here, but you will be able to understand how to score the technical marks, okay, folks. And that is something that I can, I'll have to reassure you regarding as well, okay, folks. In the uh, video question marathon that that I uh, that you currently have, let me tell you that those questions are still relevant. Why? Because it's help you understand what the technical or how to score the technical marks in the exam, okay, folks. So you can still watch it. And of course, we will provide you with the, uh, I would say, restructured uh, uh, question marathon as well. So don't worry about that. Oh, and we will be conducting some questions uh, in, in a live session as well. But more than about that, I want you to understand that uh, you have to, uh, you know, the, the current questions that we have, 
even in a, even in an outdated exam kit is still relevant for the exam so that we can score the technical marks not the professional marks the technical marks okay folks so yeah so yeah uh, uh step four was to read the examiner's report and step five is basically to do a mock exam okay folks so just attend a mock exam you will be we will be conducting a mock exam at finbram so that I can give you personalized feedback on what are the, your areas of improvement as well, okay, folks. And we will conduct that around the, uh, you know, uh, around 15th or around that region in the month of August, perhaps, so that you have time for improvement as well. So yeah, just try to uh, attend those mandatory or just send me the uh, mock exams and I can review them appropriately. And of course, the final step is to just go, to, go write your exam because once you, uh, you know, uh, done all the previous steps, you are completely ready to attend your uh, APM exam for the September 2022 section. So that's basically what what, uh, what the methodology that you need to uh, follow for preparing for the exam. And this is a step-by-step -step process. Okay, folks, that's something that uh, I always tell my students as well. So this is just a step-by-step -step process and you can't miss out on any step in between. Why exactly is that? Because I have a paper board in my hand. Can you see this? <clears throat> you can see it, right? So I have a paper board in my hand. So I'm pretty sure that all of you know how to make this as well. How do you make it? You just fold the paper in a step-by-step -step process and you get the paper board, right? So the, this particular step-by-step -step process is just like that. You have to follow it step-by-step. -step. If you miss out on one particular step, will you get the end result? No, not really, right? So that's basically the uh, idea here. So you have to follow each and every step to its core. You can't skip the practice or you can't skip the uh, you know, mock exam, et cetera. So you have to follow it uh, in this way, in this manner, so that you can uh, you know, uh, pass the exam with flying colors. So yeah, moving on to another aspect that I wanted to cover in the session. That is, okay, we are almost close to the time, isn't it? However, th this is a few more things. And uh, you know, uh, if you have any questions, then I'll be catching to those as well. So let me just quickly explain as to how to plan for your upcoming exam as well. Okay, folks, so let me know once the calendar is visible here. Is it visible? Uh, yes, it is visible. Yes, it is visible, right? Okay, great. So folks, as you can see here, we have two months to prepare for our exam, right? So our exam is on 7th of September and we have two months to prepare. And I know that you're, there could be full-time students and there could be working professionals as well, but just to give you an idea, I, I'm, I'm here to give you an idea as to how to plan for your, uh, you know, plan for these months. That's basically it. So first of all, let's talk about September. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan in a backwards manner or I, I, I'm doing the planning, uh, you know, uh, from the objective to what we have to do. Okay, folks, that's basically the idea here. Our objective is to uh, attempt the exam on 7th of September. And in order to do that, we already know as to what needs to be done, isn't it? We have to learn the syllabus, practice questions, do the past papers, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate the last few weeks, as I mentioned earlier, to practice the past papers. Okay, folks, so let's say that I'm going to start practicing my past papers from 25th to 6th. It depends upon the availability of the past paper as well. I'm just giving you an example here. You can change the dates according to your, uh, you know, uh, your ability as well. And from 24th to Monday, if I'm only attempting APM, then all I have to do is I just have to practice questions, right? I just have to practice the uh, questions from the exam kits or any other resources, video question marathon. And of course, revise the entire syllabus as well. Okay, folks, revision of the entire syllabus is a step that is embedded within each and every other step. Okay, folks, because, uh, so let's say that I'm just gonna, uh, let's say if I uh, learn the entire syllabus in July and practice all the questions in August, then there is a risk that I might forget on uh, forget out on some of the topics uh, in September, right? So in order to avoid this particular aspect, you will have to revise through the entire syllabus on a daily basis in the month of October and uh, August and September itself. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. <clears throat> so uh, how do you conduct that revision? Well, what you can do is you can either uh, create your own notes while uh, you know, 
uh, watching the video lectures, etc., or just prefer, uh, refer to my notes as well. That's also fine. You know, each individual has their own method of doing that. And of course, the, uh, if you're also if you're comfortable with watching the revision videos, then that's also fine as well. Okay, folks. So whatever uh, you prefer. So revision is uh, a really essential thing that should be done daily. When the method of doing that is entirely up to you and entirely up to the time that you have as well. For full-time students, what I would recommend is try to do at least four questions per day. That's something that I would highly recommend. And for working professionals, try to do, I would say, either one 50 mark question or two 25 mark question per day. That's something that I would, uh, that, that's like the bare minimum, I can tell you that. Okay, folks, that's something that I would recommend. So, <clears throat> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate, uh, if I'm, let's say, a full-time student, then I'm just going to allocate uh, this entire month to question practice. And I'm going to take all of July to learn through the syllabus. Okay, folks? So this is just an, just an idea. Okay, folks, I'm just providing you with an idea as to what your plan should be. And of course, you can you know, change the plan according to your time availability as well as uh, you know, various responsibilities that you may have, etc. Okay, folks, it could be your work, it could it, it could be your family, etc. Okay, folks. So depending upon that, you can create a plan on your own. But yeah, this is just to give you a brief idea as to what needs to be done, or what is the level of things, or what 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 uh, what all things your plan should include. That's basically it. And of course, the mock exam will be somewhere in August 15th. Okay, folks, I can't give you an exact date as of now, but yeah, the team will communicate with you regarding that. And if it is, let's say, the, at the 15th of August, then I would highly recommend that you try to, you know, finish everything before the mock exam. Because, uh, you know, if I get a, uh, if I have to provide you with an, an appropriate feedback, then you will have to be fully prepared for the mock exam. So, yeah, just pointing that out. So, that's all that I wanted to cover for the session. So, do you guys have any other questions that you may have? No. Not for the time being. From your side. Okay. Karen, Sumita? Uh, yeah, Renat. I have a question. Okay, Sumita, please. Mm. Uh, I'm having Kaplan study text and exam kit, which is valid till June two, uh, 2022. Can I use that for September exams? June 22. No, you can't use that. Okay. You'll have to have the, you know, the latest version. And I believe that, uh, you know, at Twintram, we have a good deal on the Kaplan materials as well. So you can perhaps check that out. Okay. <clears throat> Any other uh, question? Yeah, got it. Yeah, hi. So I'm using BPP uh, study books and also, will it mm -hmm. make any difference or uh, like Twintram provides their own material as well? Uh, it, as in, uh, are you asking me as to whether the... Uh, BPP would be better to Kaplan or? Yes. Well, there's not much difference because honestly, I have, I personally have, uh, you know, used both these, uh, well, that was an accident from my part as well. I bought both these books, you know, you know, intending that I might be able to practice more questions, but turns out that, you know, most of the questions are kind of common in both the uh, exam <laughs> kits. So okay. uh, yeah, just stick with one. Uh, I made that mistake and I don't want my students to make that mistake. So, yeah. And as for the Kaplan related material, it's basically the video question matter in itself. And as okay. of now, you can, you know, take a look at that. That's totally fine because technical mark is something that you still need to score, even if the, even if they've introduced professional marks, right? So uh, right. the current questions are still relevant or the content or the answer of the current questions are still relevant. So you can watch that, but in, in, uh, once you once you're almost done watching that, you will be provided with the updated materials as well. Either you will, will be provided with that, or we will be discussing that uh, in a live session, or you will be provided with a recorded video of that as well. Okay, folks, it depends on uh, how we are planning. Uh, we, we're still working through to get uh, the final product to you uh, to the students. So yeah. In which ways, by the uh, by the day of the exam, you will be fully prepared. That's something that we can guarantee. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, any other um, questions? I have one question. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, I have the latest revision kit of BB. So, is it sufficient uh, to prepare for exam the revision kit and your room note? Or uh, is it mm -hmm. required to know for the text also? 
Uh, okay, I get your point. So basically, you're asking if, and this is like a really common question that we get as well. So is the uh, you know uh, Pintram uh, material or question medicine as well as the uh, one of the BPP or Kaplan nursing is it enough? Well, the truth of the matter is nothing is ever enough when it comes to question practice. You have to you know keep on practicing a lot of questions as many as you can. But I can say one thing. Uh, to pass the APM exam, to pass the upcoming APM exam, these two are kind of enough from our side at least. If you get more questions, then you know feel free to practice that. Uh, but you know the questions within the question marathon, as well as the uh, revision kits, as well as the uh, you know past paper questions, would be uh, sufficient to pass the APM exam. I can give you, uh, I can you know provide you with that much as uh, at the moment. And I can tell you guys uh, one, more, uh, one more thing that I want to say is that in the exam kits, there are, uh, I, would, I would primarily focus on the past paper questions rather than the normal questions, because the normal questions are a bit, or there are questions that are provided by BPP or Kaplan themselves rather than the past paper, right? So these kinds of questions, uh, I, I try to avoid that because that's like too easy. So uh, perhaps you can avoid those kinds of questions. Just focus on the past paper. Uh, or in other words, the amended past paper questions in the revision case. I hope that answers your question, Big Enough. Any other question? So how do you feel about the updates now? The people who are a bit worried, Big Enough, Karen. And the people who felt easy, you can uh, also think that yeah, I was asking, uh, you Did know, uh, whether uh, you were, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sure what you need, but uh, yeah, you can just, uh, you know, provide me that in the chat box so that I can take a look. Okay. Sumita, what do you um, think of Sumita? the updates now that you know everything? Do you find it difficult now or do you find it okay, I would say? I think it is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have another doubt, sir. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, should I get both the te study text and exam kit or only exam kit? All oh, right, fine. study text. Okay. So uh, regarding the study texts, I would say avoid that. Okay, folks, you don't, you don't okay. necessarily need the study text because there's no extra questions there, to be honest. Okay. And even if there are uh, a few questions, they, they're like, like the simple ones. So I'll tell you the objective of the study text here. The study text is basically, or the questions within the study text is basically so that uh, since you're a beginner, when it comes to the APM exam, you need to be familiar with things, right? So they'll give you the easy things first, and then you can uh, practice the tough questions in the revision kit and then attend the exam. That's the, that's the uh, you know, perspective, or that's the idea that a Kaplan or BPP may have. So uh, when it comes to the content in the study text, I've already taken out the essence and converted into, you know, notes so that, uh, and that is exactly the notes that has been provided to you. So those are like enough. Okay, folks, you, it, it, it's already, uh, you know, covered everything. Okay, folks. And uh, as for the updates that, that will be, uh, we will be providing you with that. So don't worry about that. <clears throat> okay, so thank you. Right. And uh, I would, I would refrain from buying a study text because see the purpose of the study text is that, uh, you know, what you can do is you can perhaps use the study text as a reference. For example, if you're doubtful uh, regarding uh, some concepts while watching the video lectures or reading through the notes itself. If you want to uh, you know, conduct an in-depth analysis, you can perhaps use, a, uh, use the study text as a reference card. That's something that you can do, but you can always you know, go for the easy way by you know, coming uh, come to me with the question as well. That's like a bit more easier, right? So yeah, that's something that you can do. And uh, another thing was is that uh, regarding the study text, especially the Kaplan study text, not the revision kit, the revision kit is uh, fantastic. And I would recommend that uh, you could, you know, purchase the latest version of that, that's fine. But when it comes to the study text, most of the components are stated as assumed knowledge. For example, there are, as I stated earlier, there are, there are uh, you know, syllabus areas taken from PM as well as SBL, right? So these, sets of topics are like assumed knowledge when it comes to the study text. And I, being uh, considering the faculty that I am and considering uh, the people with exemptions, I have included all these assumed topics within the video lectures as well. So I guess, uh, you know, the video lectures would be sufficient. 
uh, sir, uh, one more question. Uh, how yeah. many hours of study should be sufficient for each day? <laughs> okay. So, were you like a, were you like a CS student before, or you know, I I forgot. Uh, no. Your... No, okay. I'm B com student. Yes, okay. this is the common question of yeah, students. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really uh, something uh, I, I understand. thought about it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, when it comes to intensity, it's all about the hours of studying things. But you know, but uh, I believe for you know some uh, faculties, even for ACCs, they you know suggest some hours as well. Perhaps some faculties do, but not me, because I am more focused on the quality or the content that you've covered rather than uh, the time that you spent for it. Because I, well, for me personally, I used to be a really, you know, before becoming a faculty and everything, I used to be a really uh, an average student, like you can you can say that. And uh, for me, learning a particular concept took maybe, uh, you know, some concepts, especially the learning curve things and uh, you know, transfer pricing. That those things like uh, took me like uh, I believe. Uh, more than uh, I believe ten or even twenty hours. Uh, I I would say it, it took me it took me a long while to understand that, and I do realize that there are students like me, uh, even you know below average students as well. So uh, it all depends upon each individual. So rather than you know focusing on the time, I would say focus on the content. You already know what needs to be covered, right? So that is exactly why I say that take these much. Uh, you know, days to cover the uh, syllabus rather than, uh, you know, take this many hours per day. So it, it's all about uh, covering the content of the syllabus and uh, doing the, num uh, the number of questions that you do rather than the hours that you devote for it. I hope you get my point, Sumita. Yeah, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, it's just that, as, as I mentioned earlier, you can just follow the uh, approach that or follow how I formulated the plan and maybe, uh, you know, prepare a plan for yourself. That's something that you can do. And uh, I believe that, uh, you know, we will be publishing a study plan within the Pentram website shortly as well. I, I don't know whether, whether they've launched it as of now or not, but yeah, you can take a look at that perhaps or ask the, uh, you know, uh, relevant staff regarding that. I'm not sure if they've published it yet, but that's like a six week study plan, but depending upon your uh, you know, uh, the time availability that you have, you can uh, change the plan accordingly. And if you want any sort of guidance in that, I'm, you know, always ready to help. I know that the uh, meeting was for an hour, but I, uh, you know, since there are quite a few questions that you guys have, I'm just extending it to 6.30 for now. So, yeah. Any other questions? And I hope, uh, Sumita, you are clear with the, uh, with my answer. Uh, yes, Jagannath, do you have anything to add? Uh, sir, I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as, of, as of now, I completed the you know, sixth session from your video uh, from mm -hmm. part A. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to start the uh, question practice. So how uh, how can I find that you know, this uh, uh, one concept is related to a particular questions? Means uh, Okay, so that's uh, that's an area that I can't help you with because uh, you see my approach is basically to learn everything and then do the questions because see the quality questions that we have either in the you know past papers or e either in, even in the uh, revision kits are not necessarily related to one particular topic. It's a it's a it's a combination of different topics, right? So that is why I uh, my approach would be to cover the entire syllabus first and then move on to the questions. Of course, you can also always refer back to the topic once again, right? Since you don't have any limited use or anything like that. So you can just always refer back to the topic if you need to as well. Oh, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. And I believe I have included, I believe, uh, a few questions in a few sessions as well. I, I don't remember how many questions, but yeah, I do remember adding a few. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other question, guys? Have you, are you, uh, have we provided you with the, you know, have they provided you with my contact info, the WhatsApp one? Uh, uh, no, sir. Today, uh, today only I got your number. Okay, okay. Sumita, 
No, we have. I think ah uh, yes, because we have added to a WhatsApp group. No, the WhatsApp group is uh for the uh you know the ad, uh, the admin staff. I would say because I, I'm not added to that WhatsApp group over there. It's not a faculty kind of thing. So, uh, basically, you just uh, ask the questions one on one. So, yeah. And and that WhatsApp group, we have like students from different uh, you know sessions. So there is that as well. It's it's just to keep track of the you know students for a particular subject. That's basically it. So if you wanna you know contact me for regarding certain questions, then you'll have to use my WhatsApp number. I'll just provide you that over here. One second. I don't know that by heart since I only picked it up recently. One second. Okay, so I've uh, provided you with the WhatsApp number. You can just use that to ask any questions that you may have. And please don't share it to any, you know, non fin owners, I would say. non fin owners, muggles, whatever you, whatever you want to call them. So, yeah. <clears throat> Right, anything else guys? Any questions at all? I can spare maybe five more minutes, so yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, for the live sessions, do we have live session like every Saturday or is there any schedule or something? We are in the process of creating a schedule, but I would say, uh, yeah, there is an irregularity because it, it depends upon my availability as well. And, you know, I can't, I, I sometimes, you know, go, uh, have to go, I have to travel a lot during some weekends so you, you may not have the sessions on those days but uh you will be i would say contacted regarding that but what you can do is you can always uh like uh keep keep some time off or free up your schedule uh in between three o'clock to six o'clock six o'clock on saturdays and sundays if that's possible just always keep in mind that you know on saturdays and sundays from three to six there is uh there is possibility that vision can uh pick up a session so just free up that particular time that's something that i would suggest <clears throat> and as i stated earlier you will have to you know mandatorily attend these because you know as i said earlier the updates would be covered in these sessions as well <clears throat> any other questions um, so one more doubt regarding EPSM sure. module. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I meant to get my exemptions, uh, so I'm not able to take up the EPSM module. So will that? Okay. Yeah, then it's fine because yeah, I'm still covering my session. It's just that you know attending the EPSM would give you a better understanding as to what the professional papers are on and the professional skills, etc. That's basically all it is. It's not uh, okay. necessarily mandatory to do that. It's just that you'll have a better understanding of it. That's basically it. Oh, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Any generic questions about ACCA or anything like that? So if you don't have any questions, since we have like around three more minutes left, so I'd like to ask a question. Uh, since you are all from you know a CA background or. Uh, may have uh, received any exemptions in ACC. So why choose ACC? That's something. And that's just one of the questions. And another question would be, you know, uh, how did you come to know of FinTram as well? That's something interesting that I'd like to know as well. So Jashwe, you can start off. <clears throat> Actually, uh, yeah. Um, actually, I got to know FinTram through uh, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook mainly, and then I okay. searched, and then I searched, and and then I saw it. Uh, it was good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. And so, uh, why choose right. ACCA? Um, actually, my dad uh, did that ACCA. So oh. yeah, I, yeah. I I um yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. I just wanted to follow him, so I did ACCA, and then mm -hmm. I. And then I did my um, actually masters in accounting mm -hmm. from Melbourne. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. That's good to know. And uh, Jagannath. Uh, yes, sir. Please don't uh, I came to that. know please, about. Please, <laughs> please don't tell yeah. me that you know it's easier than. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, actually, I came to know no uh, uh, pin time about. Uh, mm -hmm. 
chose SA CA because uh, in uh, CA final I struggled uh, struggled more to clear the you know group by exam in Indian CA okay. what we have. But okay. what I found a beautiful feature and mm -hmm. this uh, you no know, uh, industry uh, accepted this global uh, course is yet the flexibility is there and it is really industry oriented. Uh, mm -hmm. What exactly the uh, practical questions uh, they are asking in the exam? And I I I, I am using this uh, uh, in previous exam. I for FR I used Kaplan and now I am using the BPP. The questions are completely different from the CA exams. In mm -hmm. CA exam, we have pass uh, need to pass means we have to mug up the uh, answer. Have to write that is not required in the SSC exam. Uh, that that is the reasons. You no, know, the flexibility and the practical knowledge required. Uh, that. Uh, that is the reason I you know shifted to CA to SCA. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's great to know as well. And current. Um, so, so basically, I wanted to do ACCA because uh, it will help me with my work, and also mm -hmm. it's one professional qualification which uh, like interest me in terms of the syllabus that we have, the subjects and all. So okay. I, I was certain that I can't do CA, so I wanted to do ACCA. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, right. So you you have like a like a requirement to get like promoted and things like yes. that. Right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're a senior now, so yeah, get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, sir, yeah. one more thing. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, still, when when I one year back, I joined uh, SCCA. After mm -hmm. that, uh, due to this uh, you know, C exam, I left. I skipped uh, around uh, two attempt, and I continued C only. But mm -hmm. uh, still, uh, when uh, nowadays I'm writing the SSC exams, my colleagues are asking, what is that course? Means they are in the <laughs> CA final levels. Even some of the people's qualified chartered accountant, mm -hmm. they are doing job, job in some manufacturing sectors in India. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know why they are not aware of this course. Many people well, from the commerce background, they are not aware of the course. Okay. Yeah, I believe that uh, you know ACC is yet to be yet to be a bit more you know popular when it comes to the uh, the north side. Uh, I would say colleges as well. So that's something that uh, I've personally noticed. Uh, but uh, yeah, it'll become popular. I mean, as of now, it's more popular when it comes to the you know the big four firms like you know KPMG, EY, etc., as well as various other MNCs like Grand Thornton, etc. So it's all uh, it's just uh, you know professional qualification that you need within the audit field or within the finance field etc rather than a, a degree like MBA so it, it's still you know becoming a bit more popular and as for your question perhaps they you know they don't have that requirement to uh, or they don't they don't know of an option or in their maybe uh, you know professional working experience they, they may not need the uh, ECC qualification or an international at any international qualification uh, you know to do their work because uh, the people that you might, uh, you know, be uh, you, that you might. <clears throat> One second. <coughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, I was saying that the people that you are just, uh, you know, saying they they could be, uh, you know, uh, more oriented towards working with Indian clients rather than international. Could be that. I'm not saying that it will be, but yeah, it could be due to that reason. But yeah, in, uh, eventually it will get, you know, really popular. And I know that, you know, I know that for a fact that. Especially uh, where I'm based out of in Kerala, there are uh, various institutions, and uh, in a in a particular class, there are around uh, 200 students, I believe, for the skill level papers. So yeah, it's really getting popular here. <clears throat> yes. So yeah, and Karan, you were were you uh, you know in saying something in between? Or no? no, sir. Okay. Okay. And uh, I believe I have an asked Sumita, right? So yeah, Sumita, you why know, ACC and how FinTran? Yeah, I chose ACC because it is a globally recognized course. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, FinTran, I came across uh, uh, your YouTube uh, channel and I saw the demo classes and I liked it. So that is Oh, okay. Okay, that's uh, good to know. So yeah, I kind of uh, you know joined ACC for the similar reason as uh, Sumita as well. It's a global uh, global qualification, and uh, you know one of our faculties has stated this in a meeting as well. Uh, the uh, I would believe the current objective of each and every individual of our generation is to go global. So yeah, so that's uh, why ACC. But yeah, okay. Uh, I also wanted to you know 
after I'm done with it, after I you know was done with easy, that's when I you know started to learn about all the concepts and it, it actually kind of you know interested me personally as well, especially the uh, audit related concepts as well as costing. And uh, as of now, my interest is primarily focused on data analytics and uh, various other uh, aspects in relation to that, like artificial intelligence, robotics, etc., and how we use them to use them in, in accounting and various functions. So yeah. In which ways, uh, thank you for telling me that, and uh, it was great to uh, know your uh, reasons for being here as well. So I will see you later in another session where we will be, you know, discussing a bit more interesting stuff like these or interesting questions like these as well. And uh, we will also look at some of the updated uh, syllabus series as well. Okay, folks. So till then, this is uh, Vishnu Vijay signing off. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. And, yeah. Let me know if you have any sort of questions. Uh, you can just, you know, shoot them in the WhatsApp. Okay, guys. Bye. I'll see you in the next session. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.